Truckers XTV on air. We are now live in three, two, one. Welcome back to another episode of the Ace Attorney Chronicles. In the previous episode, we completed part one, episode one of the Blossom Something Something. Today's episode right now, we're going to go into the memoirs of the Cloud of Cocoa, which is going to be a flashback before Susato, I'm assuming, before Susato went back to Japan. And we had to deal with Nat Natsume Soseki again. If you're hot today's episode, make sure that like button is supposed to the channel. And for some reason, I knew we were going to deal with Natsume's little... Oh my god. A little annoying, but here we go. It was a ghastly tale of a winter's night. One of an invisible killer and a crime perpetrated on the pavement along Briar Road. As the victim lay at death's door, the mystery of just who had stabbed the young lady from behind had been resolved. But no sooner had my friend saved that Eastern Exchange student from his harrowing plight, then in the dim, flickering shadows of gaslight did a second bizarre crime rend the stillness of that very night. I dare say most can still recall the sensational headlines of the day. Haunted apartment of death. The condemned criminal's curse. The dread demon of coal gas. Yet, Though the great detective had at once discerned the truth upon his arrival at the scene, it only proved to be the overture that announced the rising of the curtain on a most tragic play. So I'm assuming we're going to talk about that freaking weird old guy that we encountered the other day that he had no significance whatsoever to the entire story except that one encounter. My name is Yurosuke Naruhodo. I'm a fledging lawyer, but starting out on my journey, six months ago I arrived at as a visiting student of law. Having made the long voyage across the sea from the Empire of Japan to here, London, England, and on the way, in a quite extraordinary circumstance, I made the acquaintance of a world famous detective. So, currently, I reside in the attic of the detective's own lodgings from where I run my legal consultor, consent, consultancy of sorts. I've successfully defended a number of clients in Britain's highest court in the Old Bailey. But since the particularly grueling and unforgivable legal battle for four months ago, I haven't returned to the courtroom. In truth, I lost my right to the, tr to the return. But that epic trial was just once more part of the epic, ta epic tale, a tale which was now about to awaken from slumber. Thanks to the letter that arrived this morning from Homeland. What date are we on? So we're going to the present time then. And whatever happened in the past comes back to haunt us. Mm, what a delicious smell, wafting up the stairs. It must be nearly time for breakfast. I better go down to Mr. Sholm's suite. And say good morning to the great detective and his flatmate. Flatmate? Flatmate. What does that mean? 30th August. Okay, I guess we're not flashbacking to it, that which is good, but I bet it's got the Hanas in the butt. Ah, Runo, good. I was just about to call up to you. The bacon's ready. Good morning, Iris. It smells delicious as usual. Before we eat, though, I have some news. I had surprise this morning. Hey, it's the thing that he pawned off. Shh, not a word, Mr. Naruto. This could be just the abstract thing for my pre-breakfast stagnation, repelling mental stimulation, my dear fellow. Morning to you too, Mr. Sholmes. Ah, yes, I see. So that's it. Why are you so close up? The truth is as clear to me as day. My faculties of observation have revealed it again. What are you talking about? You, Mr. Naruto. You have this morning met with a surprise? Well, is it not the case? Um, really, my dear fellow, it barely warrants explanation. Firstly, your hair is particularly unkempt, somewhat reminiscent of a bird's nest. Secondly, you have neglected to fasten the third button of your jacket, and clearly when considered together, these two facts point that you have been flustered this morning. Can I talk now? 
But of course, of course, though I don't look for admiration, you understand? My hair always looked like this, but it's been like the, this way since I first met you. Oh, it has? And the button was ripped off last night, if you remember. By you. Apparently you pulled your button off? Ah, yes, I recall the incident now. It was, a, it was after supper, was it not? As the evening advanced, I picked up my violin and began to play the wailing notes of the haunting tune. But then you uttered dismay. The third string snapped. Why did that happen? Why? Little wonder that, that in my vaccination, I grabbed the first button I saw and ripped it from the proper place. Well, I like it back now, please. It's troubling me that I can't fasten my jacket. And it's troubling me that you expect me to know where it is. Somewhere thereabouts on the floor, one presumes? Helpful. What matters at the present time, my dear fellow, is simply whether or not my detection was ear on earring. But Hurley, Fino said it was when he came in, didn't he? I had a surprise this morning. Ah, 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 well, that really is a surprise. Yes, this man is the pride of the British Empire, the famous consulting detective, Mr. Herlock Jones. This can be a single person in the world who doesn't know his name. Alright then, enough of those silly conversation. Come and eat this bacon before it gets cold. And I have a new herbal tea for you to try. My latest special blend. And here we have Iris Wilson, Mr. Sholmes' lodger and companion. A truly exceptional young girl who's the author of a highly successful serialization here in London. Yes, The Adventures of Herlock Sholmes was published in Rant Magazine. So, Mr. Narahodo, won't you put us out of your misery? What surprise do you have this fine morning? Oh, well, I received a letter from Japan. Oh, from Susie and me? What is it, really? That's right, and she had some rather startling news, in fact. Ah, intriguing indeed. You must tell us all about it over breakfast. Oh yes, what fun. Breakfast. This is the letter that arrived from Japan this morning by International Post. Oh, how lovely. Look at Susie's beautiful writing. I wish I could read it. And how is your judicial assistant faring, may I ask? She's very well, thank you. In fact, according to what she's written, She's actually appeared as a lawyer at the Japanese Supreme Court and won a case. Uh, really? Oh, isn't she wonderful? I caught up you your good self, my dear fellow. Uh, one case is two, you know. Apparently, Mr. Natsume appeared in the trial as a witness. Natsume, Natsume. No, I don't recall that name. Of course you do. We helped the man twice. You know, in the two cases that took place on Briar Road six months ago. Again, same place? Ah, the moustache tricky man with the somewhat feline eyes and the moustache. He didn't have to say... He didn't have two moustaches, Hurley. Yes, who could forget those two cases? They made a very deep impression on me. Although I must confess the details are a little hazy now. A very deep impression they made on you, clearly. So, oh, what was this startling news penned by Mr. Sato? Do you remember the case of the haunted lodgings, Mr. Shom? Ah, yes, it's very interesting, you know. I don't feel entirely uncertain that a case of that nature did not, not occur. He's totally forgotten then. Anyway, in her letter, Mr. Sato asked that we read over her case notes again and investigate further. Though it took place half a year ago, for what purpose? Because of something that Mr. Natsui said to her, apparently. He suggested that the real reason why she was called back to Japan was so suddenly might have something to do with the case of the haunted lodgings. Oh? On Mr. Natsume's return to Japan, Mr. Sato's father requested him about the case, she says. Something Mr. Natsume said appeared to be troubled Mr. Mikotoba, prompting him to send the telegram. Oh, that case! Yes! It was very strange, wasn't it? Yes. And I had compiled the whole story into a nice, neat manuscript, ready for the publication, too. But then Hurley here was all funny about it, remember? He was very mean. That story must not be published, you see it. Very mysteriously as well. Really? I said that? Are you sure? 
Do you perhaps know something about it as well, Mr. Sholmes? About why Mrs. Sutter was suddenly told four months ago that she had to return to Japan? It's been four months now since we waved Susie off at Dover. It was such a shock, wasn't it? The way she just suddenly announced that she had to go back to Japan? Indeed it was, due to the telegram she received from her homeland, I believe. That's right, telling her to return urgently. Yeah, because her father passed away. No, 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 it was said he was suffering from a high fever. The cause of which unknown, he's not dead. According to this letter, the news about her father's fever was just a ruse. A ruse? So Susie's daddy lied to her so that she make the voyage back home? Why would he do that? I have to admit, I have absolutely no idea. She believes it's almost certainly related to the case of the haunted lodgings. Summoning her back to Japan so suddenly like that, I wonder what Mr. Sada's father is hiding. Harley, do you know what's all about? Did he just change outfits? Hmm, ah, well, who can say? What? But, but you said... Please, I have engagements, my dear fellow. My calendar is quite surprisingly full today. And a stranger to the analysis of the matter would be excessive, I feel, even if I were quite at leisure. So, man the fort in my absence, won't you, Iris? I will, Harley. Don't worry. See you later. Well, does this mean she's going to be my assistant, judicial assistant again? You scored it off rather quickly there. I think perhaps Professor Mikotoba isn't the only person hiding something here. So seki son was involved in two cases, but only one of them was forbidden from being published. By all people, Mr. Sholmes. Aha! I found them at last! Iris, are they... The notes about the case! That's right! Susie and I could follow them together. The case of the haunted lodgings. Do you want to read them, though? Yes. Absolutely. Thank you, Iris. I have no idea what secrets could still be hiding in the shadow of this case. Perhaps if I read over the notes again, something might come to light. That's the spirit! Are we going to go flashbacking to the day? And so, Iris and I decided to read over the case notes again together. Everything from what happened to our investigation and that fierce battle in the court that followed. Believing every detail. I just need to find a clue. I have all the time in the world. Because, of course, I'm no longer allowed to practice law in the courts of Great Britain. What? Was this before? Before her departure? After the... After the unspeakable story? It was six a month. It was six months ago. A mysterious incident that unfolded on the wa white, wintry streets of London. A young woman was found lying on the snowy pavement on Briar Road with a knife in her back. Fortunately, her life was spared, but she was unconscious for several days following the incident. The fog was thick, and nobody saw her attacker. But. By a cruel twist of fate, a visiting Japanese student was walking behind her at the time, and was duly arrested. That man was Soseki san, and the man who effected his arrest was Mr. Sholmes. Believing in our compatriots innocent, Susano and I decided to represent Soseki san in court. And after a grueling trial of many twists and turns, we finally managed to prove his innocence. Trial, joyous, jubilant, jubilation! Was the man's reaction after the trial, and his jubilant jubilation was short lived. So it has to be before between. We received a telegram from Mr. Shums the following morning. The victim of the Briar Road stabbing has regained consciousness. Hurry to Bart's at once. Susato and I summoned a handsome and headed immediately to the hospital. And we're just gonna flash back to that. So it has to be March, at least March. Or February still. February, 5.30 a.m. A.m. Oh yeah, daylight saving still a, still a thing. 
There you are at last. Good morning, Mr. Sholmes. I think not. Oh. You're late. What on earth took you so long? Your telegram only arrived at 5 o'clock, Mr. Sholmes, and it's a 20-minute ride to the hospital. That's right. It's half past 5 now, and we made it a very good time. The time is utterly irrelevant. The fact is, I have been waiting for what has felt like an eternity. Ah. And point out the fact, I myself was awoken at 4 this morning by the telegram boy. And feeling it was somewhat unjust, I alone had been bruised at such an hour. I said, one to you. Well, thanks for that. Anyway, here now, so the victim is over there. She's only just regained consciousness. Should, you should introduce yourselves, and I shall observe from here. You already did a talking for yourself, well, anyways. So that's the lady who was found in the snow covered pavement with a knife in her back. Her name is. Here we are, Miss Green. St. Sinners Hospital. What's the rat doing here? Um, good morning. Hello, hello, I'm, uh, Rinosuke Naruhodo, from the Empire of Japan. Oh no, was it your knight that, are you the man who, no, 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 I'm a lawyer. And I'm Susato Mikotoba, pleased to meet you. Oh no, was, was it your knight then, are you the one? No, 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 I assure you, I'm Mr. Naruhodo's judicial assistant. Racial profiling. We heard that you regained consciousness and wanted to come to give you your best wishes. Best wishes for me? Um, thank you. Oh, Olive. I I'm Olive Green, an artist. Well, no, that's not right, is it? What I mean is, I'm trying to be an artist. Well, what really you mean? I desperately want to be an artist. Yeah, to the point, woman. The truth is, I don't have any talent. I know I don't. It's no one I was stabbed in the back. I don't think that's related, actually. Gosh, this young woman seems to be bent over backwards to put herself down. Seeing as we're here, we should ask her about what happened from her perspective, I suppose. She picked up the boat and got hit. To suddenly be struck in the back by the blade as you were walking along the pavement. What a terrible experience you had, Miss Green. It was so cold that day, and the fog was so thick, I couldn't see a thing. That was four days ago now, I think. Is that right? Yes, that's right. I'm afraid you've been comatose all that time. But the case has been solved, hasn't it? Well, unless I've been here in the hospital, I mean. Indeed it has, my dear madam. Spectacularly, by none other than I, Herlock Sholmes. Mr. Sholmes, as you well know, it was Mr. Narahoto's hard work in the court that solved the case. Are you yet to hear what happened, Miss Green? Yes, I'm afraid so. A gentleman from the police force is supposed to be coming to fill me in shortly. Oh, I see. Me coming around seems to have made everyone frantically busy. I'm so sorry, I should never regain consciousness. It was selfish of me. Oh no, we're all so relieved that you're on men, Miss Green. Really are. With that kind of attitude, maybe her surname should be Blue, not Green. So, you're an artist, are you, Miss Green? Oh no, I could not possibly claim that. I'm a fledging artist of best. I mean, I'm a student of art, really. On the Thorndike Academy of Fine Arts. Oh my, an Academy of Fine Arts? Great Britain is such a wonderful country. Tell me, Miss Green, do you live hereabouts? Oh no, actually. I don't deserve, but I feel like a flat on Brixton, Brixton Road. I see. How very interesting. Oh no, is it? Brixton is some 10 stops away from the underground from here. And Thorndite Academy is a mere three minute walk from Brixton Town Center. Does that matter, Mr. Sholmes? Perhaps not, but Briar Road is far less salbert, sal salubrious part of town by comparison. Brought in by those of inferior means. And cloning the mouth, Maleficent, Mr. Moustache. 
Inferior means, I suppose, like Seki-san does with the does with the bill. It struck me as somewhat out of the ordinary for a young fine art student to be walking in such a district. That's all. What's this? She suddenly clammed up. Mr. Sholmes, you should be ashamed of yourself, prying into a young maiden's private affairs. Ah, 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 oh dear me, do forgive me. Um, if you don't mind. I'm being discharged shortly, so I need to pack up my things. Oh yes, of course, we don't need to keep you. Thank you so much, Miss Green. Can we talk about the freaking rat? The Black Plague! From in the hospital doesn't doesn't seem the best. But it looks like a very heavy healthy sweater, doesn't it? It's very plump. I'm not sure what we can say down to the excellence of his facility. Oh, I'm messing up. I'm not sure we can say that down to the excellence of his facility, if that's what you're thinking. Hmm. This looks like the treatment notes for whoever's occupying this bed. Let's see. Do not permit to run around the hospital. The patient doesn't seem to be here at the moment, so... He or she is probably running around the hospital then. Oh dear, how worrying. What's worrying is why they haven't discharged the patient yet. We're chilling here. That's all it is. We're chilling. We're investigating. This looks like the patient's treatment notes. Let's see. Do not feed. What is this place? A zoo? You know, I seem to remember seeing almost identical to a sign in the local park. For the pigeons, yes, this is a person! Poor woman, I hope she hasn't read this. This rounded finger, wooded finger, isn't the most charming, is it? I don't think it's a decoration, Mr. Narahodo. It's an artist mannequin, I believe. Used the, with practicing, sketching the human in different poses. Really? It's not exactly what you call a typical figure for that purpose, though, is it? No, I suppose not. I confess I've never seen one quite so full figure before. Well, if you want to draw a full figure person, it's the right tool for the job. Look, there's a photograph in this frame here. Yes, it's a picture of a young gentleman. He looks to be about the same age as Miss Green, I would say. Perhaps a young woman special someone, do you think? My, my, Mr. Narahodo, I didn't know he had a sense for matters of the heart. Not in the least. I sincerely said the first thing I thought of. Is there a Mr. Narahodo here? Mr. Narahodo? Now, narrow folder now? Well, um, if you're looking for Narahodo, the lawyer, that's me, but... Ah, oh, Mr. Narafodder. Good, this is for you. Message from Mr. Saucy Natsumeg. Mr. Natsume? Is that a message? To me? Well, why would a policeman delivering a message from Mr. Natsume? Exactly. What's going on? What's a Scotland Yard constable doing playing delivery boy at the time of the morning? <sighs> what are you waiting for? Let me see that. Well, this is the most unexpected. Is something wrong, Mr. Sholmes? Something wrong, Mr. Sholmes. He says, have you not seen this note? No, how could I? It would seem that London's criminals have no intention of letting the great detective rest. A new case calls. The case of murder, no less. We must depart at once. Murder? Call cab. Time of the es time is the essence. But the trouble is, we have yet to read Mr. Natsume's note. I was thinking we ought to pay him a visit in his lodging once we did. That will be entirely convenient. Convenient? What do you mean? It's all here in the note, my dear fellows. The murder we have must investigate. It took place at the Mr. Mustache lodgings. Wait, what? I'll hail a fia what? I want a fiarc. It was only yesterday that Soseki san was in court and we were spelling doubts in his innocence. And now, the very next day, there's a murder at the man's own address. He may very well be unluckiest man alive. 
or so it seemed to us at the time, but we were soon to discover it was worse than we thought. Uh, next, ex next episode, please.